Come on, buddy. Come on closer. Let's get intimate. This isn't a stadium. There's no crazy barriers. Any of you crazed fans out there could just rush the stage at any moment and, and, and kill me, but I just feel like you wouldn't, you know? You guys like for say hi? So am I. Um, so I worked a lot of, uh, well, I should say I worked a lot of odd jobs. Um, I'm a touring musician based right in Collinwood. I live uh, about a mile from here. And this is my favorite neighborhood in Cleveland. And uh, the Beachland is a fucking institution. Um, and it's amazing. And uh, we're all lucky for it to be here. But anyways, I digress. <laughs> um, so I've worked a lot of bizarre jobs, but uh, in the beginning, I was touring about 150 days a year. And then for the other half or more of the year that I was home, it was incredibly difficult to find a job because who the hell would want to hire anybody it's gone for 150 days a year. So I was like, you know, I found myself interviewing for jobs, um, almost like I was interviewing them, you know, like, I, I knew it needed to be so flexible that I'd be like, so, you know, if I were to get this job, you'd be cool with me leaving for six weeks at a time and not hiring anyone to replace me, right? And they're like, you know, probably thinking like, we didn't even give you the job yet, you idiot. Um, so needless to say, it was difficult to find jobs. So I took the leftover jobs. Um, one job I worked was at a pawn shop in the middle of the hood in Columbus, Ohio. It was the most patriotic pawn shop in Columbus, Ohio, Uncle Sam's Pawn Shop. And, uh, and I loved it. There was a big-hearted Jewish man, uh, which earned me points because I'm Jewish um, by blood. I'm half Jewish. I'm half Jewish and half Catholic. Um, they call that a cashew. Um, but he, he liked me. I didn't tell him I was half Catholic, of course, because as soon as I heard his last name was Chase, and I was like, Shalom. You know? I was like milking it, you know. Um, started like thinking of all the stereotypes in my family, you know, and just using them to my advantage. And uh, and he had a big heart, and so he hired me. And he he was kind of like that. He just would hire people based on like, I like you, you know, or you're Jewish. <laughs> that was like his criteria. So um, so needless to say, there were some pretty bizarre employees at Uncle Sam's. But there was this one guy that I really grew to love. His name was Jack, and Jack was the security guard at Uncle Sam's pawn shop. And I uh, full-heartedly believe that he would have made a great security guard had he not been 81 years old. Um, security guard was not the position for him, given our uh, location in the middle of the hood in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, but Jack was this awesome, self-deprecating kind of old man. And every, everybody would give him shit and say, why the hell do we keep you around here, Jack? You know, you're, you're 80 years old. You know, we're, we're vulnerable here. You know, why the hell are you even on the payroll? And he'd always just say, because I'm the jack of no trades. And I thought that was beautiful and poetic. And sad. And I uh, wrote this song about it. It'll be on my next record. 80 year old security guard at the pawn shop down on East Main Avenue. I am the oldest of my kind. Through the empty drugstore parking lot. The barber 
shop turning, checking cash, turning, failing coin up laundry mat. I wash these same five button ups, but no one stands quite close enough. To smell the scents of lavender and tar. And when they forget my name, I'll lean in and tell them I'm the jack of no treats at all. And they'll laugh and say, hey, Jack, you're such a joker. And I'll say, no, I'm not a joker on the jack. No trees. The sleeping pills in the nightstand for my ex-wife. And I'll get them each morning when I pray. And wonder what the hell I'm doing in this life. When I could sleep it all away. Such a joker, and I'll say, No, I'm not a joker on the jack, no trains.